for this first equation I've got up here, I've got a couple of factored pieces multiply that give me zero back. What I conclude about these two factored pieces is x plus 5, that could equal zero to make this equation true. And x minus 4, that could equal zero to make this equation true. With that sort of understanding in mind, basically using this zero product rule as we call it, over here if I solve this equation, x would equal negative 5. Over here if I solve this equation, x would equal 4. So my two possible x values that I could plug back into this original equation to get a true statement back would be negative 5 and 4. That's my solutions to the equation. So if that makes sense, and we got another equation here, 3x minus 1 times 4x plus 5. We've got the factored pieces, or if I multiply these ideas together, I get 0 back. That means each of these pieces could be 0. So we set them equal to 0, and we solve. For this first equation, where 3x minus 1 equals 0. I add 1 over, 3x would equal 1, I divide both sides by 3, x would be 1 third. For this second equation, I subtract 5 over, so 4x would equal negative 5, divide both sides by 4, and x would be negative 5 fourths. So I appreciate that if I take 1 third, or I take negative 5 fourths, and I plug back into this original equation, I get a true statement back. Leaving us with the last one to consider. In the last one, you've actually got three pieces that are being multiplied. You've got this x here, x minus 2, and 7x minus 9. With what we've looked at so far, we know we've got a couple of binomials in these previous examples, so we know something like x minus 2, I'm going to set that equal to 0 and solve, right? So one of those solutions I'm going to get, if I take x minus 2, set that equal to 0 and solve, would be 2, right? We also, having looked at binomial expressions so far, if I take 7x minus 9, set that equal to 0 and solve, what do you get? 7x minus 9 equals 0? 9 sevenths, there you go. Right now, I know I'm not writing these steps like we did before, so understand you can write them out if it helps you to see how to solve them better. But we've only considered this piece and this piece. So what about the x that's hanging out out there? Zero. It'd be zero. Because the idea is you're taking all of these factored pieces and you're setting them equal to zero. So you got this lone x guy sitting alone like that. Doesn't matter. Just set it equal to zero and solve. You get zero back. So this one, you've got three solutions three possible x values you could plug back into the original equation and get a true statement back. Alright, so based on the first few examples, as long as everything equals zero, it's pretty nice. If it's in a factored form, it's even nicer. So for part A here, we've got a problem where everything equals zero, so we can check that off the list, but it's not in a factored form. It is a quadratic, though, where if we reverse our FOIL process, we probably can factor this out. So if I reverse the FOIL process to factor it out, in the lead positions, we've got x and x, because that multiplies to give me x squared. In the last positions, it'd be 7 and 4, right? That would multiply to give me 28. And I'm choosing 7 and 4 because if I make this 7 negative, this 4 positive, the outside and inside terms should align to give you that negative 3x, right? So there are your factored pieces. We know we're going to take this x minus 7 as a factor. We're going to set it equal to 0. We're going to solve for x. If we do that, x would be 7. We're also going to take this factored piece of x plus 4, set that equal to 0 and solve. If we do that, x is going to be negative 4. There's your two solutions for what x could be. 
Or if you plug back into the original equation, it turns out to be true. All right, so part B here, everything's set up where it equals zero. Um, it's not factored, but I do notice that this is a difference of two squares, right? So I could split this up. I split this up as a difference of two squares factorization. Take the square root of that a squared, get a's in the lead positions. Take the square root of that 144, get 12's in the latter positions. Recall that the signs have to be opposite, so minus plus or plus minus. I've got my two factors now set equal to zero. If I split it up, take each respective factor, set it equal to zero and solve. A is going to equal, from the first factor, A is going to equal 12, right? And from the second factor, if I take A plus 12, set that equal to 0, I'm going to get negative 12 back. So there's my two solutions. Does it work like that for all of them? All right, everything equals 0. Got to make sure that happens first. Part C here, if you start to factor, there is a greatest common factor, right? So let's take the 2 out. Take a 2 out, you've got 25 minus x squared left. All that equals 0. So with the 25 minus x squared, that is a difference of 2 squares. We could break this up a little bit further. Set up our two binomial expressions for our factorization of the difference of 2 squares. Square root of 25 is 5, so that's going to go in the lead position because the 25 was first. Square root of x squared, x, goes in the latter position because the x squared was second. Got to vary the signs here, minus plus or plus minus. Okay, looking at all the factors now that we have. If I start with the binomial expressions, considering what x is going to be, I'd set 5 minus x equal to 0 and solve for x. What's x going to be? It's going to be 5, right? If I take 5 plus x and I set that equal to 0 and I solve for x, it's going to be negative 5, right? What about this 2 out here? Does that 2 mean anything? Well, that 2 doesn't have a variable attached to it. So as I look at all these factors multiplied out, and I know I'm getting 0 back, the only factors that could be 0 would be these two, right? Because I know this can't be 0. Obviously, that's a 2. 2 cannot be 0. So our answers are just going to be 5 and negative 5. All right, so we've seen how to do this on the, the three previous ones. Any ideas on what we should do here on D? They subtract some stuff, like set this equal to zero first. Yeah. All right, that's a good idea. Let's, um, it's always nicer when you're doing these problems, it's always nicer to have a lead coefficient that's positive. So let's bring everything over to the left side. Keep the 6x squared on the left side, subtract the x over, subtract the 12 over. Now everything equals zero. Now we're at the same point where we were at on the previous problems because all the previous problems we started were at equal zero. At this stage, factor. Okay, we're reversing the FOIL process. So it's play time, right? What do you want to put in the first positions? Three and two. Three X and two X. Okay, if we do that, what do you want to put in the last positions? Three and four. Six and two. Is this going to work? Six and two, three and four. Not really feeling this. found our combination. Check by foiling, check the outside and the inside and make sure you're getting back to this middle term. 
Now that we have our factors, we take each of these factors, set each factor equal to zero. If you need to, you write it out. If you don't need to, you want to cut to the chase. We know x is going to equal, if 3x plus 4 equals zero, uh, what's x going to be? Negative 4 thirds, right? You subtract 4 over, you divide by 3. If 2x minus 3 equals 0, again, if you have to, write it out. But you'd add 3 over, you divide by 2, so 3 halves, good. There's your two solutions for what x is going to be. We know it has to equal zero, right? There's a couple ways to start this, but we know we want to set everything equal to zero if those are going to work. So let's go ahead and bring the 5x over. At the same time, you want to do something with this? Maybe expand that out? All right, if we expand this out, square in the 5x, we get 25x squared. Got twice this product, right? So that's going to be, what, negative 60x squared the last term. That's going to be plus 36. And we're subtracting the 5x over. It's a little two-for-one special there on that step. Expanded and subtracted 5x over. Now, join like terms. At 25x squared, be minus 65x plus... 36, all that equals 0. Any greatest common factors here? Doesn't look like it, right? So it's factor fun time. <clears throat> time to start playing. Factoring, not a problem, right? Never. Okay. So we've got our factorization. We know we're setting each factor equal to zero and solving. So brought to us by this first factor would be the solution of 9 fifths, right? Because you'd be adding 9 over, dividing by 5, if 5x minus 9 equals 0. Brought to us by the second factor, if 5x minus 4 equals 0, we'd add 4 over, we'd divide by 5, we get 4 fifths back. There's our two solutions. <laughs>